Hello everyone, this is Vrishali and welcome back to CSN IT Tutorials by Vrishali. In our previous some sessions, we have discussed about all the important topics of database with real-time examples and practical demonstrations. I have mentioned a complete database management system subject playlist link in below description box. Now, in today's session, we will discuss the next most important topic that is deadlock. So before move forward this topic, you must know about the concept of types of schedule. You know about serial, non-serial schedule, then conflict serializability, view serializability, recoverable, non-recoverable, cascading, cascadeless and strict schedule. Now again, for understanding the concept of deadlock, you must know about the concept of concurrency problem, log based protocol and timestamp ordering protocol. So I am suggesting you first you should watch all this video then only you will understood the concept of deadlock i have attached link of all those videos in below description box now from uh, today's session we will start a deadlock here we will discuss about what exactly deadlock all the necessary conditions for occurring a deadlock deadlock avoidance and detection techniques and at the end important question bank Let's start the session. Now, first we understand what exactly deadlock. As we discussed earlier, there are multiple transactions are performed at the same time on same database. So there will be a chances for occurring a deadlock. Let's take some real life examples. See here in this image, multiple vehicles are waiting for each other to go forward, right? So this is called as deadlock. Another example, here Amy wants a laptop, but this laptop used by John. Again, John wants a TV remote, but this TV remote used by the Amy. Means circular condition or looping is there. So this is also called as deadlock. Now let's understand deadlock in detail. So first we understand what exactly conditions for occurring a deadlock in database. There are total four conditions, mutual exclusion, hold and wait, no preemption and circular conditions. Let's take an example. There are total two resources, resource one printer, resource two scanner. Again, two transactions are there, transaction one person A and transaction two means person B. It means that person A use the printer, and person B use the scanner. Now let's understand the conditions. First condition is mutual exclusion. It means that there must be at least one of the resources is going to non-shareable mode. For example, here person A use the printer for printing purpose. Now at the same time, person B also wants the printer. But this is not possible, right? Because printer is one kind of resources it is used by one person at a time, right? So this is a non-shareable device. So which is called as mutual exclusion condition. One person use the resources and next person want the same resources, right? The next condition is called as hold and wait. The name suggests that here person A hold the printer. They use the printer, but at the same time they are waiting for the scanner. Currently, Scanner is used by person B, right? So as per the rule, person B first use the scanner, they release these resources. Then only person A will use that resource, right? So here person A hold the printer and waiting for scanner. This is called hold and wait condition. Now again, the next condition is no preemption. As per the database rule, you can't forcibly take the resources from the another person, right? See here, here person A use the printer, but at the same time they want the scanner. Means person A, A forcibly take these resources from person B. So this is not possible, right? This is not allowed. So this is called as no preemption technique. You can't take forcibly resources from the another person. The next last condition is circular wait. Here, there is a cycle of waiting of all the other transactions. 
let's take an example here person b used a printer person c used the scanner and person a used the fax machine now what happened here a is waiting for person b resources that is printer b is waiting for person c resources then c is again waiting for person a resources so what happened here a is waiting for b b is waiting for c and c is again for waiting a so this form a cycle so this is also called as deadlock now these four conditions are necessary occur while creating a deadlock in database now let's understand different deadlock avoidance technique in database so there are total two techniques weight die scheme and wound weight scheme first we understand what exactly weight die scheme so for understanding this concept you must know about the concept of log based and timestamp ordering protocols i have attached link of that video in below description box now see here weight and die let's take a example there are total two transaction t1 and t2 the timestamp of t1 is 10 and the timestamp of t2 is 20 t1 that is 10 timestamp it is a older transaction and t2 the timestamp is 20 which is younger or new transaction means first t1 that is 10 and then t2 that is 20 clear now understand the concept see here this is a student marks table now what is weight here t2 transaction update the record in student marks table for roll number 2 and while updating they log the transaction it means that while updating t2 no one can update the same record right because this is a deadlock prevention technique clear so here t2 update the record and log the transaction at the same time t1 request for t2 that they also want to update the same record right now what happen here check the timestamp t2 timestamp is 20 means younger transaction update the record and older transaction request for younger transaction right so in this mode young older transaction goes to waiting state means first t2 update the record release the log and after that t1 update the same record so this is called as waiting concept means older processor request for younger processor so at a same same time older processor goes to waiting mode clear now next what is die take a same example here now time step of t1 is 20 and time step of t2 is 10 so here older transaction updating the record and they log the transaction now t1 that is younger transaction request for t2 that they want to update the same record right so when younger transaction request for older transaction so at a time younger transaction that is t1 goes to abort state they are die so this waiting condition and this die condition they prevent a deadlock in database clear next now here next is wound weight scheme so the same example is there let's understand what exactly wound see this is a student marks table this is a transaction time stamp of t1 is 10 time stamp of t2 is 20 so t2 20 is younger transaction and 10 that is older transaction so here t2 transaction updating the record in student marks table and they log the transaction means no one can update the record at the same time but what happen here t1 older transaction request for t2 that they want to also update the same record right so what happen here when older process or older transaction request for younger transaction so at a time t1 older transaction get wound state or they kill the transaction so first newer transaction is perform the operation and t1 is kill means they prevent a deadlock right now again next is wait scheme so same example see t2 that is older transaction now updating the record 
and log the transaction. The newer transaction request for the older transaction. So when new transaction request for older transaction, so here new transaction goes to waiting state. Means first older transaction complete their updation, they release the log and after that younger transaction update the same record. Right? So what is wound wait scheme? When older process request for younger process, older process get wound or kill state. And when younger process request for older process, younger process goes to waiting state. So these two schemes, they prevent or avoid deadlock in database. Now, let's understand deadlock detention techniques. How to detect the deadlock? So here, every system continuously check whether there is a deadlock is found or not. If deadlock is found, they apply deadlock prevention techniques, right? So there are total two deadlock detection techniques. Let's understand first, there is a wait for graph. So this technique generally used to detect the deadlock in database management system. And this method is used for smaller database. See here, what is wait for graph? See here, in this image, same example. Transaction T1 hold a student table, means they update the record in student table. Transaction T2 update the record in grade table, right? Means T1 hold a student and T2 hold a grade table. But what happened here? T2 hold a grade table and at the same time, they want to update the record in student table as well, right? And T1 hold the student table and at the same time, they want to update the record in grade table. Means all activity comes to halt or stop conditions, right? When T2 use the grade table, they can't share it with others, right? So here deadlock is detected. And when deadlock is detected, it is necessary to abort one of the transaction or it goes to waiting mode in one of the transaction as per the deadlock prevention technique, right? So this is called as wait for graph. Means T1 is waiting for T2 and T1 is waiting for T1. Clear? Next. Now, the next technique is called as resource allocation graph. So resource allocation graph, this technique is used to detect a deadlock in operating system, right? In operating system, there are multiple processes or resources are there like CPU, printers, disk, right? Now, see here in this image. Here, square indicate the resources and circle indicate the process, right? So here, process P1 hold the resource R1. Consider that any resources like CPU, printer, scanner, etc. Okay, so P1 hold the resource R1, but P2 is waiting for resource R1. Clear? Now, next. P2 is holding the resource 2. Holding means they use that resources. And P1 is waiting for this resources R2. One resource serve at the same time one process. Clear? So this is called resource allocation graph. Means P1 is waiting for R2. R2 is allocated to P2. P2 is waiting for R1. And R1 is allocated to P1. Right? Means cycle, form is, cycle forming is there. Right, so this is called as deadlock detection technique that is resource allocation graph. So it is mainly used in operating system. Wait for graph, this technique used in database, and resource allocation graph used in operating system. So in this way, you can detect the deadlock in database. So there is a prevention techniques and also occurring techniques. Now, as per previous year question paper. The one of the most important question, what exactly deadlock? Explain deadlock detection and prevention techniques in detail for 8 marks. So you should prepare this topic completely. So this is all about deadlock. Thank you. Keep learning.